In the last few days, I've got messages from quite a lot of people asking if I'm going to be touring in 2021. And rather than reply with an abrupt hell no to every single one of them, I thought this topic deserved a bit more nuance, and I think there's a conversation to be had around this. I think we can all make a bit more effort than the truncated surface level communication that a single tweet affords us. No? So yeah, my short answer to the question, are you going to be touring this year, is hell no. But you deserve more than that, and I'm interested in hearing your views on this. First of all, thank you so much to the people who have been asking me if I'm going to be playing. It means a lot to me that you're interested in whether I'm going to be playing gigs or not, because presumably that means you'd like to attend those gigs. That's great, and I'd love to come and play for you. If there's a first of all, there has to be a second of all, and the second of all is, who am I to be talking about any of this anyway? Well, Penfriend is a new solo project, but prior to launching it in May 2020, I'd been touring for many years, both under my previous solo project moniker She Makes War, and also touring the world as a professional session bassist and vocalist for various artists. Last summer, when it became clear there would be no live shows for a while, I started trying to work out how long it had been since I'd actually had a year off performing, and I managed to count all the way back to the age of seven. My musical career began with school violin and saxophone lessons, as well as singing all the time in the backseat of my parents' car. All of this leading up to me picking up the guitar and bass as a teenager, and starting touring age 19 or so. So yeah, it's been a while. Why then would I choose not to play gigs in real venues with real people, if we're being told by those on high, it's okay to do so? Let me explain. Reason number one. I haven't seen a single member of my family since January the 12th, 2020. We all got together the day before to throw a surprise party for my grand's 90th birthday, and it was a really lovely weekend. Then, when the pandemic started, my husband Tim and I battened down the hatches in our Bristol home, and we chose to stay on permanent lockdown from mid-March till now. And that's not going to change until it's a lot more safe out there than it is at the moment. All of our family members are scattered around the country, and it just hasn't felt safe enough between lockdowns to go and visit anyone. So travelling outside of my local area to play live music has been so far down on my list of priorities that it hadn't even occurred to me that people would want me to do it. There's just no way in the world that I would have gigs on sale at the same time as choosing not to drive five hours to see my parents. That's just not consistent with my values and the choices I've made over the past 12 months. And I think that without holding on to values, things fall apart pretty quickly. The second reason I've decided not to play any gigs this year is because I just don't think it's safe enough to do so. I'm not a conspiracy theorist and I'm not interested in getting into political debate on the internet, but I do not trust this government or any government really, to truly put the well-being of normal people above other interests. I hate to dash anyone's hopes of going to festivals, of going to see their favourite band on tour, all of the things that you love doing and have been waiting for for so long. I want that to happen for you, I really do. But think of it this way round. As a performer, if I agree to go and play somewhere, I'm taking on some of the responsibility for at least giving the impression that that event will be safe. And let's be honest, we just don't know that it will be. I'm long overdue a dental appointment and an eye test and I just don't even know if it's safe enough for me to go and do that. So the idea of gathering a number of people in a small space just kind of makes my stomach turn. I'm actually married to a concert promoter so this is a conversation we have a lot in this house. I understand that venues and festival organisers need to stay afloat. They want to hope that events will be back as normal in June as our Prime Minister has laid out in his latest plan. And they want to give gig goers that hope as well. We all need hope. But I believe very strongly that everyone involved in setting up events to gather people together during a global pandemic has to think beyond themselves, beyond their company. This is an ethical decision to make on a personal level, not just something to go blindly into because the Prime Minister said it's probably going to be okay. I really think it's about being on the right side of history at this point. We've all made so many sacrifices over the past 12 months. Why would we undo all that good work and put any member of our community at risk? I just don't get it. I understand the impatience. I understand wanting to feel like things are going to be back to normal again. I understand wanting to feel free to do the things we love. But any selfish hopes or desires I have pale into insignificance when I think about the safety of strangers. Because really, they're not strangers. We're all part of something so much bigger than ourselves. And when I'm having a down day, that really does give me some solace. To know I'm never really alone in the world. Throughout all this, I've kept imagining school kids of the future reading with horror about the decisions that were made in 2020, 2021, perhaps even further ahead than we are now. All the preventable deaths. I'm here to create things, not destroy them. I can't think of anything worse than putting on a show, playing a gig because I wanted to play a gig, 
and then finding out that even one person in the audience got sick. It's that serious. The third reason I will not be playing any gigs in 2021 is about hope. I've talked a lot about hope already in this video because it really is what keeps us going. Last summer I read Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, a book about his experience of surviving a concentration camp in World War II. It's incredible, you should really read it if you haven't already. He wrote that the people who couldn't visualise a future outside of their terrible situation had the hardest time surviving in the camp, and often didn't. All through 2020, I did everything I could to add some positivity and some hope into the world, through the songs I released, the blog posts I wrote, through the podcast episodes I created. I'm all about trying to encourage people to keep going, to remind them that they're not alone and that we're all together in this. What I'm unwilling to do is add to the raft of shows that might slash probably won't happen, that will have to be postponed perhaps multiple times into the future. I know many artists are going through this at the moment. This is about me as well. I'm a sensitive person, that's why I'm a good artist. And I don't want to invite a situation where my hopes are dashed again and again and again. Where the energy I had for an idea gets ground down to nothing. That sucks. I don't want to tie the hard-earned cash of music fans up in tickets. I don't want to have to keep rerouting a tour and banging on about it online all the time. I just can't. I can't do that to you and I can't do that to myself. I'd rather just make this decision now and put it out of my mind. We only have so much energy and I'd prefer to spend mine on things I can control rather than things I can't. Of course, I reserve the right to change my mind. I truly hope that big changes will happen in the next few months, that we can all get the vaccine and start to peek our heads outside a bit more, see our family and friends, catch up on all the hugs that we've been missing, and return to something that feels more like normal life. Until then, I'm going to keep myself and my family safe, and keep you safe by doing so. I'm going to keep making things and sharing them and inviting you to listen and watch and read and chat with me. I also have plenty of live stream shows planned for YouTube, so if you are itching to see me play some songs, that's the very best way to do it. If you got something from this video, please click the like button, and I'd love to hear your views, so please do comment below. If you're new to my musical world, please do subscribe and click the little bell to get notifications of new videos. I'm going to be sharing more about my creative process, mindful productivity and digital minimalism in the coming weeks and months. I also make a weekly podcast called Attention Engineer, where I speak with fellow artists about creativity, grit and determination. I'd also really love you to check out the weird and wonderful video for my latest single Exotic Monsters, which is over here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.